I am heartened by the stance taken by the leadership of at least two major transport groups in deciding not to support any strike at this time in relation to that delay of the 16% increase in taxi fares. And those two groups are Todd's, led by Edgerton Newman, and the One Voice Transportation Group, led by Lorraine Oscar Finnegan. Now, the delay came after the government asked the sector for the deferral, citing the need to maintain inflation in single digits to keep the economy on course. Despite the announcement last week, Thursday, that taxi operators and the government had agreed to the delay or the delay of that application of the second phase of the increase, on the weekend, some taxi operators reportedly indicated their intention to strike, to protest. They expressed being upset at both the government and the transport leaders who agreed to delay the increase. Now, this morning, I'm in no way disregarding the feelings of many hardworking transport operators who are looking forward to seeing another bump in the money they'd be able to take home and the money they'd be able to set aside for maintenance expenses or other operational costs. I'm also mindful of taxi operators who do not own their vehicles and must make the car owner's money plus their own. The cost of operating a taxi can be expensive and those expenditures change often. And like many Jamaicans, leading up to the time of an increase in your take-home pay too, you start to calculate how better you'll be able to manage your expenses, fund something you couldn't buy before, and have something left over for savings or investments. So when someone comes back and tells you that the money move is not happening, there's that natural disappointment. So it's completely understandable. But I started out by saying that I am heartened by the move by some taxi groups to not support any strike or a protest at this time because of the bigger picture that's on my mind. And that bigger picture is that transportation costs, in particular taxi fares, taxi fares are a big factor driving inflation. And that taxi fare was increased in its first installment by 19% last year in October. To compensate for this, it was thought that the cut in JUTC fares would offset the impact of inflation rate at that time and going forward. But as you heard in the BOJ's apology in February, they miscalculated the effect and it didn't quite work. It presented as an anti-inflationary measure, but missed the mark. So point-to-point -point inflation for the end of January was at 7.4%, driven largely, we heard from the BOJ, by that first tax fare increase. For February, it stood at 6.2%, just outside of the target range of 4 to 6%. What worked to achieve that, according to the BOJ, were factors in to include a relatively stable foreign exchange and the downward trend of commodity prices overseas. But it was still outside the target because of that big transportation factor. It weighs heavily. With that in mind, you can see how another bump in tax fares by 16% would push inflation even further away from that target range of 4 to 6 percent. As a matter of fact, the BOJ Governor Richard Biles, at his February briefing, said the increase would mean they wouldn't achieve the target until June 2025. But without it, inflation is projected to be back in range by Christmas. The Bank's Monetary Policy Committee met on the 16th and the 19th of February and was advised that inflation is projected to remain above the bank's target range until June 2025, largely because of the impact of the temporary price shocks, which I outlined earlier, including the projected impact of the second phase of the PPV fare increase, which is scheduled to take effect in April 2024. Without the impact of this second an increase in PPV fares, inflation at December 2024 would fall within the target range. So again, you're hearing that there from uh, Richard Biles, how much of a factor taxi fares, transportation costs weigh into the matter of inflation. The increase would also prompt the BOJ to increase interest rates, to curb inflation from running away even more. And this would have to be done because running inflation affects a lot of things. It affects your purchasing power 
and furthermore, rising interest rates to curb inflation affects you buying a car or getting a loan, among other things. So it's always a tussle, Georgian listeners, to find the balance. The balance right now is for operators to just hold on a bit in the interest of the bigger picture. You might have your isolated interests, and that's fine, as I mentioned before. But demanding a move of those interests could tip the scale. In the meantime, there are some other interests that could be considered at this time and others that should be urgently addressed too. What are those incentives that could apply to your sector? Present those to the Transport Operators Steering Committee. The improvement of road conditions, taxi parks, perhaps consideration on the fees applied to operators. This steering committee has been proven itself as an avenue that works. So use it. I encourage you to use it to hammer out the other measures that have a less adverse effect on inflation at this time. And who knows, as I, I was hearing from the Todd's president in the newscast at six as well, there's a possibility too that an increase could come later this year. But use the avenues that you have, which is the steering committee, to hammer out those measures that have a less adverse effect on inflation at this time. And that's what's on my mind.